Hi, Seth David here with another wonderful webcast brought to you by Nerd Enterprises Incorporated. And today we're talking about QuickBooks for investments. Over the um, years, I've heard people buzz here and there about the fact that QuickBooks is not good for tracking investments. Well, if you think a little bit outside the box and think a little inside the lists, you'll find out actually QuickBooks, whether they know it or not, into it, whether they know it or not, has provided a pretty nice platform for tracking investments. You just have to know how to set these things up in QuickBooks and that's sort of one of my specialties with uh, Nerd Enterprises here is we're, we're, we've been pretty successful at finding sort of out-of-the-box ways of getting QuickBooks to do things it wasn't necessarily meant to do, but we get the solutions. Uh, we get a lot of uh, projects in like that where people call us up and say, hey, I've, I've got this kind of unique situation, wondering if it can be done in QuickBooks. And usually the answer is yes, it might just take a little customization, a little bit of, a, like I said, outside-the-box thinking and... Really what it comes down to when it comes to anything, and this is what I train our bookkeepers on a lot, is thinking in terms of the most generic components of the transaction. When you're trying to figure out how do I book this, you have to think in terms of what are the generic components of this transaction? What does it really boil down to? And if I'm thinking about purchasing stocks, and to keep it simple, we'll use that as the example. Um, I know there's a lot of other types of securities, but we'll focus on stocks for now. What am I doing at the, at the core level? What I'm doing is I'm purchasing something in quantity at one price, and I'm hoping to sell it later on at a higher price. Well, doesn't that sound a whole lot like inventory? It does to me. And, and that's exactly what it is. We're purchasing inventory. We're purchasing, the inventory is our shares. We're purchasing shares in a company, which happen to represent ownership in, in a company. So instead of buying and reselling brooms, I'm buying and reselling shares in a company. Now, that may not be my normal trade or business. It may be something I'm doing on the side, which is fine. You're going to see how in the setup, I account for that very specifically. And what it comes down to is your stocks are going to become inventory parts. Every time I purchase a stock, it's going to become an inventory part. And I'm going to show a certain quantity purchased at a certain price and so on and so forth. And there's some things you have to do in the setup to tweak it a little bit. Like I said, not necessarily uh, what QuickBooks was was meant what we were meant to do with it, but but it works, and I'm going to show you how, and it actually works really well. So let me share my computer screen with you, and uh, actually before I do that, I should go to a full screen here, so you can see more better. See more better. And what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be purchasing stock in Google, trading at 488.62, up 12.79 for the day. And we're going to purchase shares in Google, and then we're going to sell them. We're going to purchase 1,000 shares at the current price. And then if you look, the 52-week high is 629.51. I'm just going to round that and say we're going to sell them for $629, just so you can see what this looks like in QuickBooks. And now here we are. I've laid out the transactions in Excel real quick so that it's easy to see what's going on. So the first trade is going to be a buy, and we're going to buy the 1,000. Total value is 488,620. We're going to pay a 2% commission. Now, on the buy side, the commission gets included in the basis because it increases our basis so that we show less of a capital gain later on when we sell the stock. When we sell the stock, the commission is separate. It's an expense. It goes to reduce the proceeds that we receive on the sale. So, again, that's a little different. It's treated a little differently. So what happens is when we record the purchase, and the reason I bring that up, is we have to figure what the real price per unit is, including the commission. And so that's what I've done down here in the spreadsheet, is I've taken the total price, including the commission, divided that by the 1,000 shares we're purchasing to get the real price. And we're going to possibly get some rounding issues, which is why I put a round formula there in Excel to minimize that. You still may get it, and I'll show you in QuickBooks how to do that. So let me go into the QuickBooks file now and show you what this looks like. First, I'm going to walk you through the setup. The first thing is my account structure. I have my main checking account, Bank of Nerd, and I have my brokerage account, Nerd Schwab. And within that, I have two sub-accounts. One is for cash and one is for securities. Again, keeping it simple for the purposes of this webcast. So the first thing we really need to do is fund the brokerage account. So what does that look like? I'm going to write a check from Bank of Nerd. And let's just say I'm doing it electronically. Today's the 13th. And I'm writing the check to Nerd Schwab for, let's just say, uh, 400000 Okay, And then the account here, going right into my other bank account, which is Nerd Schwab, but specifically to cash. I'm putting cash in. Save and close. 
So what I've just done is I put the 400,000 into Nerd Schwab into cash. It's sitting there in cash. Now I know what I've got at Nerd Schwab to use that I can invest into securities with. Now let's look at the uh, item setup. I've called it securities here. It's really just the item list. I've already set up the Google item. And the, it's a sub item of investments. So if you have other inventory that you're tracking on this set of books, you create the investments group and all the, the stocks that you purchase become sub items of investments. The cost of goods sold account is going to be a cost of goods sold account. I name it basis in investments so that it, it's something meaningful, so that it makes sense. Then I go to the asset account. That's going to be the securities account, which is the sub of the bank. So when I purchase it and I increase the value of an inventory of securities, it's really increasing the securities portion of the Nerd Schwab account. And of course, the income account for when I sell it, I've created is called proceeds from sale of securities. Now I'm going fast because I don't have a lot of time. So at this point, let me get right into it. Now that you've seen the setup, we're going to do the buy. When I do the buy, it's really writing a check, but I want to focus your attention over here at the bottom two tabs expenses and items we're going right into the items tab now again we're doing this electronically the bank account is not bank of nerd it's the cash sub account <coughs> so we're using the cash sub account to make the investment what's the amount let's go back to my spreadsheet there's the amount 498 392.40 and I'm going to come down here and the item is goog it's a thousand of them and to come up with the cost, probably the best thing to do is type 498, 392.40. Here's a bonus tip. Forward slash is divided by 1,000. So that way we take care of any rounding issues. Ask me if I want to update the cost. You can say no. It's irrelevant, really. So now I've got my purchase, save and close. Now, of course, I didn't count on it being more than 400,000. So presumably that difference would have to come from my bank of nerd let's quickly write that check into nerd Schwab the cash save and close so now I've liquidated my whole bank account but I've got cash of 160750 and I've got my securities for 498392.40 now let's do the sell and you're gonna see how this works the customer is nerd Schwab it's the brokerage house, which is why, by the way, you have to do it as a check, because that way, and we're going to assume that it's being sold at a later date, let's just say 72010. The item is Goog. I'm going to sell 500 shares. And what did we say we're going to sell it for? We're going to sell it for $629. Copy that and paste it in. Here I'm going to pay a commission, a quantity of negative 1. We calculated that to be 6290 and that way it gets my net proceeds and I'm going to deposit that to my cash account. It's going to be liquidated and they're going to give me my cash net of the commissions. Let's close the account. Now let's see what it looks like. Securities remaining value is half of the original purchase or the 249196. I've got my net proceeds in cash and my total Schwab account is worth $559,000. Now very quickly let's look at the reports that I've created for this. And you obviously can customize this. This is filtered for just the one item, but this is a report that can be set up, which shows me here's the original purchase. I bought a thousand, and there's the proceeds. Then I came in and I sold 500 shares for the 314,500. Now this, these next two lines are part of the same transactions. What QuickBooks is doing is it's showing the original cost for the 500 shares, half the amount coming out of securities and increasing my basis in investments. Now that I've sold it, it's really basis in investments sold because that's what has to be figured in to the calculation of what I've uh, paid for, for the stock in order to compare that with the proceeds to figure out what my capital gain is. One quick caveat on this, which is that QuickBooks will average cost what we're um, what we've purchased. So if we make more than two purchases along the way, then we'll be able to, um, it'll average cost it, which will uh, sort of make it difficult for us to figure the first in, first out basis capital gain. The way you can do that is to set up a separate item each time you purchase it and append it with a dash one, a dash two. That way you liquidate the oldest quantities first and then move forward through the list. And using the report I just showed you, you can see exactly what that is. So hopefully this helps. Of course, go to our QuickBooks forum. If you have questions, it's nerdenterprises.com forward slash forum. 
post your questions there. I'll get you the answers. And of course, I'm available for hire if you want a private session going into more detail on this. I look forward to seeing you on the web.